We are going to make our way through a mini Vata Balancing Yoga class. But before we move into our yoga practice, let's backtrack. Let's talk about Vata, right? its elements, its qualities, where it congregates in the body, what its aggravations look like. We need to identify these first so that we can create a practice that brings in the opposite qualities to create balance. So vodka is air and space, and those elements hold the qualities of light, cold, dry, and mobile. Vata tends to congregate in our belly. It tends to congregate in our joints, our brain, our nervous system. So what we are going to do in today's practice is we are going to bring in more earth, fire, and water. We're going to work on staying close to the earth to ground, find that stability. We are going to move through shapes that help us lubricate and nourish the joints, as well as cultivate heat so we can bring in some more of that fire element. So to get started, we are going to come into child's pose. So right away, getting close to the earth. Now as you come down, let yourself soften. So one thing that those that are Vata dominant or Vata imbalance tend to do is tense up. Right? When they are feeling nervous, when they're feeling anxious, naturally the body starts to clench and hold on. So find that support of the ear, see if you can start to soften. And then begin to find your breath. Naturally, the breath has a bit of that fire element within it. When we find our ujjayi breath, inhaling through the nose and H-A exhaling through the nose, we find even more of that fire, that heat. So start to hone in on that breath here. You continue to notice if you start to clench or hold on anywhere. Allow your breath to help you to soften. Notice if the mind is wandering. Those that are Vata dominant or Vata imbalance, they can do find a lot of that mobile energy within their mind and their thoughts. So if you're all over the place, shift your attention to an internal dristi or an internal intention, something that can help keep you present and aware. Take just a few more breaths here. With your next in breath, you're going to roll forward, coming to hands and knees. Bringing hands and wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. And as you come into this shape, take notice to what your elbows do here. Those that are Vata dominant tend to be hypermobile. So if you start to lock out those elbows, can you find a little more buoyancy there? And then connect to your breath, start to roll in and out of your cow and your cat. And if it, as long as it feels safe, you can keep the eyes closed. Start to feel a little more and think a little less. And moving out of that chaos of the mind. And as you flow between these two shapes, connect to the earth elements by rooting down through your hands and the tops of your feet. You can imagine that water element coming into your practice as it weaves its way in between each and every vertebrae, lubricating the spine.
and take about three more rounds of your cow and your cat. When you're ready, let an in-breath pull you back to a neutral spine, shifting your gaze just beyond your hands. Begin to pick that right knee up and off of your mat and start to circle it. And you can make those circles as big or as little as you'd like. We'll take a few in each direction, using this movement to lubricate the hip joint. If you do hear those snap, crackles, and pops, that's that excess air of vata being removed from that joint. Next time you circle your knee down, let it come all the way to the earth. And then you'll just switch sides, lifting that left knee and beginning to circle. And taking a few circles in each direction. Next time the knee circles down, you can drop it to the earth. Inhale, roll forward to your cow pose. Lift your heart and your gaze. And then exhale, tuck your toes under, glide your hips up and back, down dog. As soon as those hips lift, step your feet as wide as your mat. And see if those heels can get a little closer to the earth. Drop the chin into the chest to create some length through the back of the neck. What this wide-legged child's pose, or this wide-legged downward dog allows us to do is to further root, to further connect to that earth energy. With the new breath, start to walk your hands backward toward your feet keeping them as wide as the mat, and then release into your fold. And you can keep the feet as wide as the mat, maybe even bend the knees a little deeper, giving those knees a little more buoyancy. Drop the chin into the chest, let the hands dangle, or go ahead and reach for opposite out. Feel all four corners of your feet root down. And a little bit of activation in your low belly as you draw it up and in towards your spine. Yeah. And exhale, drop your hands to the earth. Make sure there's a slight bend in your knees. Again, think water elements, and you'll roll all the way up to standing. With your exhale, roll your shoulders back, open your heart, continue to root down through your feet. And you'll sweep your arms up to the sky, palms connect. And with an exhale, trace your midline and fold back down to the earth. Full release through the head and the neck. Walk your hands forward, returning to your wide-legged dog. And then draw your feet in, finding your traditional dumbbell. Mindfully bring your knees to the earth, find your tabletop. With an in-breath, extend your right leg behind you, and with an exhale, bring your right foot between your hands. Make sure you can see your toes past your knee. Inhale, draw your heart forward, pull your shoulders back, feel the top of that left thigh drop toward the earth for your low cow lunge. Pull the low belly in toward the spine so you don't collapse through the lower back. And for this practice, we're going to shift your gaze to that right big toe. Right? And letting our drishti come to the earth is great for balancing that vata energy, especially in the mind. Your next exhale begins to lengthen your right leg, nose to knee. If it's successful, continue to pull your right hip back, flex your toes to your nose. And blocks are always a great option for either of these postures. In this cat lunge, can you pull the shoulders back and soften? 
Feel the spine lengthen. Exhale, breath, roll forward, ground that right foot. Feel the upper and your thighs hug in toward one another. With an in breath, lift up to your low lunge. As you lift here, feel the low belly draw in and the spine lengthen. All four corners of the feet root. That actually means that the toes soften. Once you find that foundational piece of this posture, go ahead and pull your hands to your heart. With an in-breath, twist from your belly to the right, and you can stay here. You want to make sure the twist is from the belly, not from the hips, so the hips continue to square forward. And then you can drop your left elbow to your right thigh, press your palms together as you roll that right shoulder back, compressing any excess air out of the belly, starting to stimulate those digestive organs. And then we're going to shift your gaze back to that right big toe. Being okay. Holding within this space, continuing to breathe. Next in breath, you're going to rotate through center, reach the arms up, lengthen your spine. And then exhale, bring your hands to the earth. Lift that back knee, step the left foot up to meet the right, release into your fold at the top of your mat. Let there be some buoyancy in the knees, and with an in-breath, think water, roll up one vertebrae at a time. Exhale to roll your shoulders back, open your heart, and root through your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, trace your midline, fold back to Now with an in-breath, lengthen your spine, create a nice flat back. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands, sit back to your plank pose. Shoulders glide over wrists, buoyancy in the elbows, gaze shifts to the top of the mat. And in this shape, we really start to bring in that fire element. And you're going to continue to hold here and breathe. Notice what the mind wants to do or is telling you to do, especially if you are about to dominate. When it comes to being challenged, Vats is like, I'm out of here, right? It's run away rather than stay and hold. Breathe through it. Find that support of the earth. Now with your next in-breath, shift to your tippy toes or drop to your knees. Exhale, arms hug the ribs as you lower all the way to the earth. You'll release your feet as you arrive. Then slide your elbows under your shoulders, forearms are parallel. Inhale, lift your sphinx pose, keeping that softness in your shoulders. If there's any irritation in the lower back, you can bring your feet as wide as your mat. Create that softness rather than tension. Lift through the heart for one more breath. And then exhale, lower to the earth. Slide your hands next to your ribs. Inhale to your cobra pose. And with an exhale, transition back to child's pose. Once again, bringing the front side of your body all the way down. Release any unnecessary tension through your shoulders and your face. With an in-breath, you're going to roll forward, come to hands and knees. Once again, stack the joints. Inhale, extend your left leg behind you. With an exhale, bring that left foot between your hands. Inhale to that low cow lunge, extending your heart forward, pulling your shoulders back. Drop your gaze to your left big toe. With your next exhale, begin to lengthen your left leg, nose to knee. Maybe you continue to pull the toes back toward the nose. Being present and aware of your body's needs on this side. Go 
Kind of shift forward, reground that left foot, hug the upper inner thighs toward one another, and then inhale to your low lunge. Soften through your toes, engage your core, let the spine get long. And then once you find that foundation, foundational piece of this pose, you're rooted. Go ahead, bring your hands to your heart. Allow an inhale to twist you to your left, twisting from the belly rather than the hips, and then drop that right elbow to the top of the left thigh. Press the palms together as you roll your left shoulder back. And then shift your gaze to your right big or your left big toe. Continue to breathe in this shape. One more breath. And with any breath, you're going to rotate through center, reach the arms up. Exhale, bring your hands to the earth. Lift your back knee and then step your right foot up to meet your left. Tanasana, your forward fold. Buoyancy in the knees and you'll roll all the way up to standing. With an exhale, you'll roll your shoulders back, open through your heart and ground through your feet. And you'll sweep the arms up. Exhale, trace your midline, fold back to the earth. Give yourself the opportunity to release through the head of the neck. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, step back to plank. And once again, we're going to hold. Find that alignment. Engage your chest, your belly, your quadriceps. Breathe into that fire, that heat. Make sure there's a little buoyancy in those elbows. Next in breath, shift to your tippy toes or drop to your knees. Exhale, lower to the earth with control. There's no rush here. And then your elbows will come under your shoulders. Forearms are parallel. Lift to your sphinx pose. Make any modifications that you need here. Shifting your gaze just down the tip of your nose. And you're also noticing as we move through this practice, there are shapes that help us release excess vata or those elements and their qualities, but a lot of the practice is the energy behind it, right? the intention of how we move. With your next exhale, you're going to lower to the earth, slide your hands next to your ribs, cobra pose, and then child's pose. Let yourself melt back to the earth, release through your shoulders, soften through your face. And in breath, come to hands and knees. Exhale, tuck your toes, lift your hips downward, facing dog. And begin to shift your gaze to the top of your mat. With your next breath, bring your feet to the top. As you arrive, you can bring your feet together or hip distance apart. You're going to bend your knees, lower your hips, inhale, chair pose, using the shape to bring in a little more of that fire element. You lighten your toes, activate your core, letting the tailbone drop toward the earth. Let your eyes find a focal point, your external drifting. And then exhale, let's lower a little more. And then exhale, lower a little more. And then come all the way to the earth. Drop your hands next to your hips. And you can keep them here or bring them behind your knees. You're going to rock back, engaging your core feet and lift for modified Navasana. If you'd like, you can bring the feet forward, shins are parallel to the ceiling. Maybe you even extend your arms forward. So find your variation. Release any unnecessary tension. 
bringing a little more fire back into the belly, right? igniting what we call Agni, which is our digestive fire. Stay connected to your breath. And with your next exhale, you're going to lower a quarter of the way down. Next exhale, another quarter, so you're about halfway down. Next exhale, another quarter. And then all the way down. With an in-breath, take a full body stretch. And with your exhale, hug your knees into your chest and your belly. Cross your right ankle over your left, and you can just hold your shins here as you cross the ankles, pulling the thighs into the belly. Or you can reach your hands for the tops of your feet and pull your feet towards your glutes. Using the shape to, again, push any excess air out of the belly as well as release any tension that's congregated in the lower back. Your next exhale, release your feet, bring them to the earth about hip distance apart. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh, flexing that right foot, push the right knee away for your figure four. Now that left foot can stay as it is, or you can pull that left knee in towards your belly. As you find the shape, if you are pulling the left knee and notice if the shoulders start to tense up, they curl inward. Can you pull them back and continue to find softness as you breathe into your right hip? And our hips are actually known as the junk drawer of our body as a lot of times our undigested experiences tend to be held there. And so our hip openers are a great way to release, to create space, to not only clear or create space in the body, but the mind as well. And vatas tend to, when they are imbalanced or they are stressed, they tend to carry a lot of that tension in their lower back and their hips, where you might find that pittas carry that tension in their shoulders and their back. Bring that left foot down to the earth, followed by the right. And just take a moment to heel toe your feet to the edges of your mat, maybe even reach your arms out to a T shape and windshield wipe your legs side to side. Let's bring those legs back through center. Hug them in towards your belly. Cross your left ankle over your right, and if it's accessible, you can reach your hands for the tops of your feet and pull your feet towards your glutes. Just a few breaths here. The release of your next breath, you can let go, bring your feet back to the earth. And then cross your left ankle over your right thigh, flex that foot as you push the knee away. And then maybe you draw that right knee in toward your chest and your belly. Roll the shoulders back. Release any clenching through your jaw and your wrinkles and your forehead. Your only job here is to hold this shape and breathe using the heat of your breath to melt away any tension in that left hip.
Let's bring that right foot back to the earth. Followed by the left. Heel toe your feet to the edges of your mat. Maybe reach those arms back up to a T-shape. And then rock out the hips, sweeping the knees side to side. You're going to rock yourself back through center. With an in breath, pull your knees into your belly. Extend your arms out to a T shape if they're not there already. With an exhale, drop your knees to the left. And then as long as it feels okay on the neck, shift your gaze to your right. And allow yourself to land. Let the legs get heavy. Let the shoulders drop away from your ears. And as you arrive in the shape, as we really start to slow things down, notice where the mind goes. And when the mind or the pace of the mind starts to pick back up, what happens to the body? Perhaps here you return to that internal drishti or that intention to keep you present. You could even just simply follow the flow of your breath. Your next in breath, you're going to come back through center. And use your exhale to drop your knees to the right. And that full release, let the earth support you. As long as it feels okay on your neck, you can look over your left shoulder. And continue to stay present and aware here. In your breath, come back through center. And carefully release one leg at a time all the way down to the earth for your Shavasana, your final resting pose. And some other options for Shavasana for someone that is Vata imbalance is placing one hand on the heart and one hand on the belly or even placing a blanket across the belly for a bit more of that grounding energy. Once you come into this final shape, take note of the shift in your own energy, your body, your mind, your spirit, and in how powerful that self-awareness is and those concepts of Ayurveda. Ayurveda believes like increases like and opposites create balance. So if you were feeling excess vata energy, hopefully you feel a little more balanced now. If you weren't, maybe you were feeling heavy and lethargic. And also notice how this more grounding practice made you feel and how perhaps a different practice could shift that energy to make you feel more awake and energized. Take as long as you need here in your Shavasana. When you're ready to get up, I'll see you in the next video.